we're building a check splitting app, which means users have to be able to enter the cost of their check, how many people are splitting the check, and also what kind of tip percentage they want to leave. Hopefully, you're already thinking, this means adding three state properties to our app. So you actually enter data as the app runs. So we'll start by adding three new properties to our content view. We'll say, at state, private var, check amount is 0.0. So a double with a value of zero. The second one we'll say, at state, private var, number of people is two. And then at state, private var, tip percentage, a default value, I'm going to say 20. So we have a default value of 0.00, .0 for the check amount, a default value of two for a number of people, and the default value of 20 for the tip percentage. Each of these three values has a sensible default. We don't know how much check will come to, we don't know how many people it's gonna be, we don't know the, the tip percentage, but zero, two, and 20 are a good starting point for the app. Of course, some people prefer to leave a different tip percentage. So we're gonna let them select how much a tip to leave by adding, using a predetermined array of sizes to work with. We're gonna store this as an array somewhere, so we'll add a fourth property beneath these three to store the various tip percentages it can offer. We'll say, let tip percentages be an array of 10%, 15%, 20, 25, and zero. So, on to our view body. We're gonna build this form up step by step, starting out with the text field where you're gonna enter the value of the check, how much they wanna pay for their meal. We'll start with what you know already but you'll see how it doesn't quite work right. We'll say there's a form with one section inside, and that section has a text field for the check amount. So we'll say text field with a title of amount, binding its text to dollar check amount, like that. And that's not gonna work. It's an error straight away in Xcode. That's okay. The problem is that SwiftUI likes text field to be used for entering text. Unsurprisingly, you know, strings on the screen, and we could allow that here. We could say, um, enter any kind of text just fine, and we'll just carefully convert that string to a number we can actually work with. Fortunately, we can do better. We can pass this value, our check amount, a double to our text field, and ask it to treat the input as a currency. So rather than saying bind the text check amount, it's not text anymore, it's a value. And the value is going to be dollar check amount. And the format for this text will be dot currency with the code of USD, US dollars. That's an improvement. It's better. But we can go further. Because of course, this is now saying we want to use US dollars as a currency. As you can see now, dollar zero point zero zero, which is nice. But obviously, over ninety five percent of the planet doesn't actually use USD, uh, US dollars for their currency. And so, trying to force dollars on them will just be annoying for our users. A better solution is to ask iOS if it can give us the currency code for the current user, if there is one, of course. It might be USD. It might be CAD for Canadian dollars or AUD for Australian dollars or JPY for Japanese yen or something else. And of course, they might not have a preferred currency value if the user hasn't actually set one in the first place. And so rather than forcing USD everywhere, we're going to say, I want to use the currency with the code of locale.current.currency question mark dot identifier and I'll use nil coalescing with USD, like that. Now this locale thing is a massive struct built into iOS that's responsible for storing all of the user's region settings. Like what can do they have? How do they um, separate thousands in numbers? How do they use uh, measurements? Is it metric or imperial or something else? And so much more. In this case, we're saying, okay, get the user's locale, current locale, 
read out their currency code if they have one. Hence, this nil coalescing thing here. This might be they have no currency set at all, but we fall back to USD if they haven't provided anything. So we always have something for this text box, which is nice. Now, so far, our code creates a scrolling entry form of exactly one section, which in turn contains one row, this text view here, which is fine. Uh, when you create text fields inside a form, the first parameter, this one here, is uh, placeholder text, shown uh, when the user has no text inside it, giving them an idea of what to type in. So they clear all the text, it'll say amount in there. And the second value here is that two-way binding to our check amount property, which means as you use types values into the text field, it updates the property. And this third value going in, the format, controls the way the text is formatted on the screen, making it a currency with dollar sign at the start. Now, one of the great things of the way the at state property wrapper works is that it will automatically watch our values for changes. And when something happens, it'll automatically reinvoke the body property of our view. That's a fancy way of saying it'll reload your UI to reflect the change state. And it's a fundamental feature of the way SwiftUI works. To show this off, we're gonna add a second section to our form down here with a text view showing our check amount like this. We'll say a new section here, and we'll text of our check amount using the format of dot currency, the same code, locale dot current dot currency identifier nil coalescing USD. And that's almost the exact same thing as our text field. It asks if you want to show this check amount value formatted neatly as a currency, either system default or USD, if there isn't one available. Uh, later on, we'll be using a different style here to show uh, percentages for tips and so forth. These uh, text formatters are really helpful. Anyway, we'll make this show something else later on, but for now, just run the app in a simulator or use the preview if you really want to. I use the big one on my screen so you can see it more easily. Um, just so you can noodle around and try it out. So you can try it yourself and see what you think um, and you know, interact with it a little bit. So here I'm, I've got an iPhone 15 Pro Max, nice and big on my screen as you can see. And uh, I'll just go ahead and change this value here to be, uh, let's do 10. And you can see as I'm typing, it is updating both values straight away. Type things in, it'll reflect that new state in the other checkbox, uh, text box straight away, which is very nice. So this synchronization happens, this syncing of the data happens because our uh, text field here, the amount, has a two-way binding, this thing here, dollar check amount. And this check amount property is marked with at state, which automatically watches for changes. When I change, it will reinvoke the body property of our view. So it'll reload our UI, and therefore this text view below will have the updated value of check amount every single time. Now, the final project won't show check amount here in this text field, but it's good enough for now. Before we move on though, I wanna address one important problem. If you are using the keyboard uh, to enter things in, if I bring it up again, there we go. I tend to use hardware keyboard, by the way. It's under, I think, um, is it device or features? One of these other, oh, input IO, there you are. You can choose connect hardware keyboard as shift command K to toggle that. I do that a lot. Um, so shift command K for hardware keyboard or not. Anyway, when you have the keyboard up here, um, they're gonna tap things in by going to the, the number area and saying add like a $52 check, for example. And that's fine, um, but really we want to not have to select the other keyboard. Like in here, they can type in F-I-S-H, right? They can type random things in there and when they clear it, it'll figure out it's not a number and get rid of it, but it's very, very annoying to have that in the first place, to have to go into the, the number area every single time by hand. Um, when obviously we want numbers here, full stop, right? Fortunately, text fields have a modifier we can use to let us force a different kind of keyboard for this input box here, and it's called keyboard type. We can give us any kind of parameter specifying one of the range of keyboards available to us. Um, in this case, you want number pad or decimal pad. Um, both of those show digits zero to nine, but decimal pad also has a decimal point button, so you can do, you know, 32 bucks 50, for example. And so, for this text field here, the first entering amount, I'm gonna say I want the keyboard type of dot decimal pad. Make sure we have numbers on here and decimal point. 
for easier numeric entry. And now when I activate it, I'll just see numbers. I can go in and say uh, 32.50, for example, which is much, much nicer. Now notice how it entered a, a little line break for keyboard type, and I push it all in by one level. So I didn't just write keyboard type like that, and push it in one level like that. Um, this is not required. It's not like Swift code at all, for example. Um, it does make uh, it easier to read what's a view and what's a modifier. Anyway, go ahead, run it up again. You can see you don't need to type numbers in now, which is much nicer. Um, keep in mind, we've said show a different keyboard here, right? They can type in, you know, 50 or whatever, or 20, um, but it doesn't stop the user from entering other values. And you saw the hardware keyboard, they can type whatever they want to. They can just enable hardware keyboard and type in fish, and that's fine. It'll be cleared out and press enter, of course, but they can do it. Similarly, they can copy and paste text from another text field into here. That's fine, but it will be filtered out as soon as they press return. 